Good morning and welcome to Berkeley United Methodist Church, where our mission statement is to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. My name is Vicki and I'm the music director and associate pastor here at Berkeley and we welcome you wherever you may be coming from to our services and we invite you to pass the peace of Christ to your friends and neighbors by saying the peace of Christ be with you and they will respond and also with you. And so we begin the peace of Christ be with you. Our daily and, and weekly activities are on our Berkeley Buzz, which comes out both monthly and weekly. To find the monthly buzz, go to our website at berkeleyumc.org, scroll to the bottom of the page, and the link for the newsletter is there. For our weekly buzz, you may give a, a shout out to Liz in our church office. She's our administrative assistant. And let her know you would like your email added to the buzz newsletter that is emailed out. And you can email her at office at berkeleyumc.org. And now let us begin our worship today with a message from our pastor, Rusty Teeter. Good morning, I am Pastor Rusty Teeter and welcome to Berkeley United Methodist Church, our live stream service. So glad that you're here this morning. Uh, we continue to work toward having in-person worship, T talking about that, and we hope to have that soon. In the meanwhile, we'll continue to have our drive-in service. What a great time. We had good weather this morning to be able to worship. It was great to get to together. And so glad that you're joining us for this live stream today. If you're part of the Berkeley UMC family, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, if you're visiting, if someone has invited you to come, or if you're watching this later on recording, uh, thanks for joining us here at Berkeley. And especially if this is your first time to join a worship service, welcome. And we hope that this is a great experience for you today. We love knowing who's worshiping with us today. And so in the Twitch chat, if you're willing just to to chat in there who's all joining for worship love to see those names and so glad for you to be with us today we're blessed to have in our worship service to the service today flowers from uh, doris holcroft's uh, funeral that we had this week and what a blessing that was to be with her and her family we also had dorothy rittenberry's funeral this week and it was a blessing uh, to be with her family uh, continue to remember those families in your prayers and it's great to have these flowers to help us remember Dorothy and Doris. Uh, what, a, what a blessing they've been to our community. And a couple of things I'd like to tell you about. So we know through uh, the, the difficult uh, time we had last week with the winter storm, the pandemic that's happened, and especially kind of us as a community working through these personal challenges of our close friends, uh, people in our family who are passing away. And we know that many people are struggling pers personally in different ways, that a lot of people are experiencing grief and different things. So we are offering uh, a grief group the next six weeks. On Monday evening, evenings at six, we're gonna have a time that you can come and join the grief group. And it's really just a chance for you to share if there's difficult things going on for you so that we as a community can both hear that and pray for, the, for you and be there for you. So tomorrow night uh, is the first one, and that one is on Zoom. And so if you can contact me uh, or the office or Ginger uh, Waller, she can also give you the Zoom uh, link for that. But we hope that you uh, will, will come to that and have a chance to be able to share what's going on with you and then also be a part of other people's uh, working through this grief as you listen and know what's going on for that. So please join us for that if that would be helpful for you or if you'd like to be there for others. Also this week, we'll have our third um, Roman study in our Berkeley Life Group. We're meeting Thursday nights at 7 on Zoom. We had a very stirring discussion last week about chapter 1 of Romans 
and I anticipate uh, it to be even more for chapter two, if you know the, the sequence of those two chapters. And it's been a great chance. There's people in that group that come to contribute because they, they have a lot that they've learned about Romans. And some people for the first time reading Romans and are listening and also contributing it from a fr fresh perspective. We'd love for you to join that group. It's a great chance to get to know people and also doing some very intense study in scripture, which we feel like is going to be very beneficial for us. So I hope you can join us with that this week. And so as we worship today, uh, I, I hope that today is a chance for you to really connect with God in some significant ways. We have some, uh, the hymns plan that are really an opportunity to express amazing and really heartfelt worship to God and also open up to God in a way that really would connect with the theme. So as you come to worship today, I invite you to sing with vigor and fervor the songs that we sing and to open your hearts up to God. If you're at a place where you're uh, trusting God in a very significant way, may this be a great time of worship for you today. If you're trusting in God but having some struggle with that today, I hope that I'm encouraging you to, by faith to sing these songs and enter in in a very engaging way and it can lift you up. Or if you're at a place where you're uncertain and you're trying to figure out this God thing, we hope that today's words and all that we do today will be help for you in that. And so we invite you maybe if you're not ready to sing uh, the, the bold statements of these songs, that you would at least read them and listen and uh, let them be a part of the searching that you're doing. We pray that today would be a significant service for everyone that's involved. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we open up our hearts to you today as a community scattered in different homes in different places. We pray you'd fill this sanctuary with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you'd fill each home, uh, touch each person with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts to see more of who you are, Lord Jesus. Open up our hearts to be able to trust and follow you more fully today and this week. And um, Lord, I pray for your presence that would be comforting uh, for those that are in need of comfort, would be healing for those in need of comfort, would, be, would give wisdom for those who are seeking wisdom today. So come, Holy Spirit. Amen. As we listen to uh, these, uh, the, the music that Tyler plays for us today, I invite you just to use this time to prepare your hearts, to really open up your heart, to allow God to prepare you for worship today. Thanks for being here.
Can you hear me now? Let's start all over. My name is Karen Walters, and it is a blessing to be with you all today. Today's call to worship is based on text from Genesis, Mark, and Romans. Pilgrims, we are invited to journey through this season of Lent toward the one who calls us each by name. Disciples, we walk with Jesus wherever he leads us, pulling our fears, our doubts, and our longings behind us. Believers, we seek to trust the God who always surprises us. His promises take on flesh and blood in good news called Jesus. Our opening hymn today is an old standard, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let us sing. Our first reading today comes from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is their violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, 
in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were not written, were written not for his sake alone, but also for ours. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our special music this morning is a song called The God of Abraham Praise. Here I go. The God of Abraham praise who reigns enthroned above ancient of everlasting days and God of love Jehovah great I am by earth and hand confessed I bow and bless the sacred name forever blessed. The great I am has sworn, I on this oath depend, I shall on eagle wings upborne to heaven ascend. I shall shall God's power adore and sing the wonders of God's grace forevermore. The heavenly land I see with peace and plenty blessed, a land of sacred liberty and rest. Their milk and honey flow, and oil and wine abound, and trees of life forever grow with mercy crowned. The God who reigns on high, the great archangels sing, and hold Jehovah, Lord, the great, I am, we worship thee. Today's gospel reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. 
But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Karen. What a challenging scripture to, uh, to look at and think about this morning, uh, this idea of Jesus calling us to uh, deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow him. And my question today for us is, what kind of faith do, do I have to have or do I got to have in order to be able to live that way in following Christ? And so as I was thinking about it this week, I actually thought about George Michael's. Now, that might be a funny connection with you, but those of us who are around in the late 80s and 90s, I know that dates and that's after some of you or before some of you are born. Uh, but George Michaels came out with a song that was called You Gotta Have Faith. Now, uh, as I look back at the words of that song, you know, at that time, I can remember the Christians being very excited because here's George Michaels, you know, on the, the big platform and he's talking about faith. So I look back to these words, though, and I'm not quite sure it's the kind of faith that we're looking for. The song is basically about George Michael saying he's not going to be with this one woman because he knows her history of, uh, as he describes it, throwing people's hearts on the floor. And he says, I understand that also because I've thrown many hearts on the floor also, but I'm not going to be with you tonight because you're going to throw my heart on the floor. And then the faith that he's got to have that he says is that someday he would meet someone that he could be with that wouldn't throw his heart on the floor. And so when I'm thinking about the faith that I got to have that Jesus is talking about, I'm like, I don't know if that's the faith that I'm looking for. But that's the question for me today. What is the faith that we got to have in order to live the life that Christ is calling us to? Uh, join me in prayer. Uh, God, we come this morning and thank you for the truth and power in your scripture. And as we open up our hearts to you today, I pray that you would help us to understand what it is you're saying to us through your word. And mostly, Holy Spirit, that you would come manifest for us the faith that we need to be able to follow Christ and to trust God in this way. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So as we're on this Lent journey, moving toward the celebration of the re Resurrection Day here in a few weeks, these few weeks I'm trying to look at the different parts of the life of Jesus for us to see how those specific parts of the life of Christ minister to us and how through us those can also be in ministry to other people. Um, and so again, today what I'm talking about is the faith that Christ had in following Christ Father and uh, following God. And when we think about the faith that we got to have, again, I'm unsure if the faith that George Michael speaks of is what we're looking for. Uh, but how do we, you know, what is this faith we got to have? And how do I muster it up the type of faith that Christ is calling us to and that it also is received and accepted by God? Talking about this area of faith or trust, I hear many people, as I'm having conversation with them, talk about that. Someone might say, I need to have more faith. Or someone might say it as, articulate it as, I need to trust God more. Or oftentimes people are talking about the surrender or letting go. How can I let go and let God? 
And so it really brings me down to this question of, uh, of what is the faith that we got to have? Oftentimes when people talk about faith or trust, both in general and of God specifically, it's kind of like wishful thinking. There's no guarantee. Now, this would be in the category that George Michael was singing about, right? He was hoping that he would meet a woman someday, that that could be the case, but there was near no guarantee that that would happen. And oftentimes, I believe that people put their faith into ideas that they hope will happen, but there may be no guarantee that they will. And sometimes we even put these expectations on God, having faith that God will do something for us that God is actually not necessarily promised or there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. And so where is it then that my faith ends my ability to trust and that I need help? There are several categories that I thought about. First of all, sometimes I don't know uh, out on what I'm supposed to step on to have faith on. Uh, the, I don't know. I'm not sure what to step out on. And so when that happens, there's not enough in me to be able to trust because I don't exactly know what it is I'm supposed to trust or what is the truth that I'm supposed to follow. And that and, and I need help at that point. And my faith ends and I need help when I don't trust that God's plan is the best. It made me think about this story in the Old Testament with the kings. And there was a king who was in a lot of trouble. Babylon was invading, and they just didn't know exactly what to do. So he sent a messenger to Jeremiah. And the message to Jeremiah was, Will you come and give us the word of the Lord so that we can know what to do? Jeremiah sent back a message to the king saying, I know your heart. If I say the word of the Lord to you and you hear it and then you're responsible for it, I know that you won't follow it. So I don't want to come and say it. And the king sent back, no, come and speak the word of the Lord. Whatever you say that God says, we will follow. So Jeremiah comes and the word of the Lord to the, to the king is surrender to the Babylons. If you'll surrender and everybody will go over, they'll be saved. If you continue to fight, this whole generation will be lost. Well, the king says, I don't think that's the word of the Lord. I think we'll do something else. And of course, unfortunately, that whole generation was lost. So sometimes we don't want to we don't want to, uh, my faith ends when what God asks me, uh, I don't think is best. Second of all, my faith ends and I need help when I want something different than what God wants for me, even if I know it's best. So I've, I started sharing with you last week that I, I'm dealing with some issues in my life that I'm going to be a little bit more open and honest with at time go, as time goes on. But in particular, I was having a conversation about these issues with God this past week. And I said to God, I really need, God, for you to come help me work through or stop in these issues. And I, I surprisingly felt this very immediate response from God. In my heart, I sensed God saying to me, I have provided all that you need to be able to get past these issues. And then the first thought, kind of thought that came from my heart was, oh, I'm not sure if I want that help. I think I kind of like where I am. So sometimes God gives us something to step out on, and we know it's best, and we still say, I'm not sure if I really want that. And then sometimes my faith ends, and I need help when what God calls me to or the truth is costly when it might take more time and energy than I'm willing to give, or it might call me to sacrifice my rights or something painful or my life in order for it to happen. It made me think of, uh, there's a book that's been very influential in my life called The Celebration of Di Discipline by Richard Foster. He's got a whole chapter on the discipline of service. And the gist of the chapter says this, at one point, at the point that you choose and surrender yourself as a servant to Christ, then that's the choice you make. Then whatever service that God calls you into, it's not necessarily, you're not choosing whether or not you're doing it. You've chosen as you've offered yourself to Christ. And that often means that we'd be willing to sacrifice us for the benefit of others. And that's challenging.
And so then when we think about this, this type of faith of where I need help and where mine ends, the next question for me then is, well, what is this faith that we're talking about? What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 defines faith as, it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. Now, this word hope is very significant for us. Oftentimes, we use hope like George Michael is talking about. Hope for us is wishful thinking, something that we hope and maybe at some level of possibility is true, but there's no guarantee. Biblical hope is very different. When the Bible talks about hope, that is based on something that God has said or done. We may not be able to see it yet. Maybe it hasn't happened yet, but God has spoken it, and it's going to happen. And so when we talk about faith as the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of what we do not, do not see, for me in a very practical way, faith is living as if what we're hoping for is true. It may not have happened yet. We may, may not be able to see it, but God has declared it's true. And today I'm acting, I'm living as if that is true. So in some of the ways that we, we have assurance because God has promised it, even if we can't see it, we have faith. So for example, um, by faith, we celebrate the lives of those who have passed away because we believe in God's promises. So even in the midst of our mourning of Doris and Doris and of Dorothy and of Greg and of Debbie and of others, uh, we, we celebrate in those, in the midst of our mourning, we celebrate, uh, we re we're remembering their lives and celebrating that, but we're also celebrating for them in the, the present. Because God's promise is, if we have been baptized in Christ, as the ceremony uh, says that I read twice this week, if we're baptized in Christ, then we'll be clothed in Christ's glory and death. So we trust that those loved ones of ours are with Christ and are in glory. And so we can celebrate because we believe that is true. By faith, by faith, I think about giving offering to God, uh, giving uh, tithes and offerings to God. Those are by faith also. Sometimes we might even stretch ourselves. We're giving because we trust what God has said as he promises to provide all that we need. So I can give today trusting that tomorrow God is going to provide what I need. Now, this type of faith uh, is also involved in things that are secular, not even necessarily Christian or faith-based or God-based. So we live by faith when we drive through a green light. We can't see the red light of the people coming the other way, but we believe that is true, and we act as if it's true. When we don't stop and we drive through a, a green light, we are having faith, both that it's red and that person has seen it, and they're going to follow the law and stop. And so that's an, those are examples of what it means to live by faith. Now, in the readings we have for today, we've been, gi been given great examples of what it means to live by faith. If you followed through the disciplines readings this week, you read about the covenant of Abraham, and he's referred to in these Romans passage. So, Ro so Abraham is a great example of someone who lived by faith. God spoke several times to Abraham this covenant, and God said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you in many ways. I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to do all this stuff for you. And he also said, I'm going to make you the father of many generations. You are going to have offspring that go for many, many generations. Well, as he spoke that promise to Abraham over time, there came a point in time when Abraham and his wife, Sarah, became, became beyond childbearing age. So in the human natural sense, it was impossible for them to have a child and to have any type of generations. But what the scripture said is there came a point after that point where they were able to have children that God say it came to Abraham and said, I will give you a child and you will be father of many nations. And the scripture says that Abraham believed God and is credited to him as righteous righteousness. Abraham was considered righteous because he believed God. Well, not only did Abraham believe God, Abraham also began living as if it's true. Abraham at that point put away his plans 
to have descendants other than through Sarah. Now, before that, he had tried some other tricks of the trade that didn't go so well. But at that point, he, he began living as if God's promise was true. And then he had a child. And then what I want to uh, invite you to look at today is the life of Christ is to me the greatest example of a human who's lived by faith. There's two passages of Scripture that describe it in detail that help me to see very clearly the life of faith that Jesus lived. John 12, verse 49 uh, says this. Jesus was saying, I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me. Then in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. In these two verses, Jesus is basically saying, I only speak what I hear the father speaking. I only do what I see the father doing. Christ, in everything he said and did, he followed God's will in every way. And to me, this is the greatest example of what faith is. Uh, Jesus had hope that who God was and what God said was truth. And he believed that and he lived as if it was true, even if he couldn't see it. What a powerful example. The Romans passage that Sarah read for us today talks about our faith that is credited as righteousness. And what I love in that passage, if you can look at it again, is that Abraham was considered righteous because he believed that God would do the supernatural thing that he promised of bringing a child to him when they were not able to have children anymore. And he makes this comparison when he says that assurance that your, your faith is credited as righteousness is not only spoken to Abraham, but it says it's spoken to anyone who has the faith that Abraham had. And then it goes on to say the faith that we are called to have that is compared to Abraham's, his supernatural faith believing God would give him a child, uh, we are concredited as righteousness when we have the faith that God raised, it, raised Jesus from the dead. We believe that God did that supernatural thing. We can't see it. We can't be guaranteed it happened. We've, God has said it's happened. We can look at the evidence. We have hope that it happened. Faith is when we believe that happened, and then we begin living it as true. We believe that it happened. We, do, we believe that our forgiveness and redemption comes through the resurrection of Christ. And now that we have surrendered, we believe that it's that power of the resurrected life in Christ that will sustain us. And it's not just that one time when you say, okay, I believe it, I'm saved, everything is good. It's this idea that we have faith that that resurrection power of Christ in us is what gives us life and, and, and gives us that continual step of openness to believing to trusting and obedience and then we come to this mark 8 passage that uh, karen uh, read for us or maybe i got those two switched anyway the mark 8 passage where it uh, talks about this this situation that came up where um jesus was saying you know i'm, I'm gonna be arrested i'm gonna be killed I'm going to die and then I'm going to rise again. And Peter's like, hold, oh, hey, wait on. We, we've got some good stuff going on. You're the leader. You can't die. And Jesus is like, listen, you're, you're thinking not of the way God is thinking. You're, you're thinking your own thoughts. And then he says this very challenging passage that whoever would follow me must deny themselves, take up their cross, live as if they're going to their death, and follow me. And so I'm often, often very challenged of, what does that look like to deny myself, to take up my cross and follow Christ? Does that mean everything I want, I got to say no to? I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure out what exactly that means. And this week, as I looked at these passages, I feel like I got a deeper understanding of it than I hit, did before. What the essence of this denying myself and taking up my cross. It brought me back to Jesus in the garden. 
this amazing scene where Jesus comes before the Father, and in a similar way to Peter, he's saying to his Father, listen, this is going really well. We're seeing a lot of people touched. A lot of people are believing. Get on board. This is going great. And I know you want me to go to cross next week, but can we do this differently? But then he ends by saying, but not what I want, God. What's your, your will be done? And I believe this is the essence of denying myself, taking up my cross and following Christ, is saying to God, God, it's not what I want to do, but I want to know what you will for my life, and I want to follow you, and I want to do that. It's that willingness to put God's will over mine. It's that willingness to sacrifice in obedience for the benefit of others that I see in that. And so then that brings me back to this idea about faith. Again, faith is in the, in the object of what we have faith. It, the faith in an object is dependent on these things. First of all, it's dependent on our knowledge of the object. The more that we know about something, the more that we're willing to trust it. I spoke with some of my friends from Midland this week, and they told me about during the winter storm a couple of weeks ago that there was this pond in the middle of Midland, Texas that froze over, and there were actually people ice skating on this pond in Midland, Texas, talking about something out of the ordinary. And so I can imagine uh, the people in Midland, Texas, maybe they never even seen ice before, but they see this pond and they're going out, and I can just see them, you know, slowly going out and testing it, seeing how far they can get, even seeing someone ice skating out there. Someone's going to be very, you know, slow in going on that because they want to know if it's really frozen or not. And similar for us, what I'd say, if you want to have more faith in God, the more that you know about who God is, the more that you know about Christ will increase that faith for you. Secondly, our faith is dependent on the reliability of, of the object of our faith. And I believe that God is constantly working uh, to prove to you that God is reliable in knowing the best for your life and knowing the, the best use of your life. And I believe that there, uh, as you go through life, that God wants you to give, the, give you the opportunity to rely that the, what he has for your life will be will be best so that when Christ when God calls you to do something that you seem like may not be best or at least you don't want to do you're willing to say God every time I followed you it's turned out best so even today I'm going to do that God wants to increase our reliability and then third our faith is dependent on our ability to be able to trust and obey and so what do we do when we come to our those, the, those areas of our faith where I need help and my faith is not enough. I'm not willing to follow God even though I know it's true. And this that I'll end up with today brings us to Romans chapter 1 verse 17, which I think describes this in a very beautiful way. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, For in the gospel of righteousness of God, a righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just that is, as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. When it says this phrase, our faith from first to last, other translations will say from faith to faith. Uh, I've recently read a scholar that opened this up that really helped me in many ways. What he says is the righteousness is by faith from first. This first faith is the faith that Christ had in his father. And then the last faith is the, last, is the faith that I'm to have in God. And what is saying when we live by faith, that the faith from first to last is that Christ gives us his faith so that we can trust God in the right way that Christ did. Our faith is dependent on the faith of Christ. And so growth for me in faith is coming to a place when I realize I don't trust enough, I don't have the courage and humi humility to obey, that I can turn to Christ and say, Jesus, will you manifest in me the trust and obedience that you had in God so that I can trust and obey? Recently, as I'm working through these issues, I found myself saying this several times. I don't have the courage to be able to stop or to do what I need to do to work through these issues. And I'm turning to Jesus to say, Jesus, will you come and manifest in me 
your ability to be able to do this. And I've been be, began finding it very helpful. So practically through this Lent, this is what I'm inviting you to do. First of all, increasing the knowledge of your object of faith will greatly increase your faith. The more that you learn about who God is, the more that you study the life of Christ, just this knowledge can increase your ability to trust and obey. So I'm encouraging you during Lent to take on some time of reading, of looking into the life of Jesus and learning. Second of all, we want to increase our openness to knowing God's will. And this can come through prayer. This can come through scripture. This can come through in individually asking for wisdom and direction or with a group asking for direction. I'm just inviting you to, to, to put some rhythms in, in your life where you turn to God and say, God, I want to know your will for my life. Maybe in this specific area of my family, my work, this relationship, this difficult, but that you're asking and that you're listening. And finally, uh, that you would have the courage and humility to obey. I invite you into this prayer that I've discovered a little bit more recently where I'm saying to Jesus, there's not enough in me to be able to trust and obey. Will you come and manifest in me your, your trust to be able to, 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 to know and believe and have hope and then have the courage to take the action that I need to? I'm hoping for you for that as we work through this slant of leading up to the resurrection celebration. Let's pray. God, you have uh, revealed yourself as a God who is present, who cares, who has the power, and is choosing to reach out and help us. And so I pray that you would uh, increase our knowledge to be able to believe that, and mostly you would increase our courage to be able to live as if that's true. So I'm praying for each person listening today, God, that you would be very present for them, that you would show your, more of yourself to them. I pray that you would reveal more of your will to them, and then mostly that you would manifest in us the faith that was in Christ so that we can believe and have hope and live as if that's true. In Christ's name I pray, amen. As we listen to this reflection, I invite you just to reflect on that and just to have a conversation to God about what that looks like in your life. Thank you. Our hymn following the sermon today is a Samuel Sebastian Wesley hymn called Lead Me Lord. We will sing it twice.
as we come to our time of prayer this morning. <clears throat> Thank you for those who uh, gave prayer requests this morning in the, the drive-in. And we invite any of you to either in the chat or through an email to send a prayer request this week. Uh, we've got a team of people e each week that are praying for these and lifting these up. And so please feel free to send a prayer request and we'll be praying for them. Uh, so as, w as we go into prayer this morning, I want to lift up uh, thanks for several things and also to pray for those in need. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you, we turn to you, we, we are trusting and having faith in your presence and your power in our midst uh, during this time. So I'm praying for people uh, in our community as they continue to recover from the winter storms last week. God, will you be present for us? And mostly, will you empower us as Christians? I pray for all those organizations and volunteering groups that are helping out. Will you empower us to be the church in the world today? And then, Lord, I'm just praying for our, our, our world, our country, our community, and persons that we know that are continuing to struggle with COVID. Uh, God, we grieve and we hurt. We pray for your peace and your presence for those families uh, who have lost loved ones. God, for people who are fighting for their lives today with COVID, Lord, will you rescue them and save them and heal them? And then, Lord, those who are sick, will you be present and, and bring them to back to health? And then, Lord, we know financially, job-wise, family-wise, uh, domestic abuse is going uh, on because of this, uh, and child abuse. God, will you please be present in all the, all of our homes, Lord? All of us are dealing with this in some way. Those that are lonely and isolated, God, we pray that you would help us through the fears, through the effects, and provide all we need and be present for us in the midst of uh, dealing with this COVID pandemic. Please, God. Specifically today, uh, I want to pray for Kevin and Katie and Debbie. Uh, friends of Patty and uh, Robert who are going through difficult times uh, in the midst of uh, their sickness and suffering. God, I pray for Gloria, my friend Catherine's mom, and her health issues she's working through this week. We pray for Phyllis Coombs. We pray for Carolyn's cousin, Eddie. We continue to pray for Jan and Fritz and Rick as they mourn uh, the death of Rick's girlfriend, Debbie. Uh, God, for others in our congregation who are sick, Lord, we pray for your healing, your presence for them. Uh, for those that are grieving, Lord, as we grieve through um, these that have passed away in our congregation, Lord, I, I pray for those families. I pray that you would continue to give us peace in the midst of that. We celebrate, God, I, I, I celebrate with Annabeth Rose that she made her goal of selling 300 box of girl Ca girl scout cookies that is awesome and uh, thanks for that excitement for her and what it'll provide for those girls uh, to be able to continue to do scouts in a way that's helpful for them we are so excited and give you thanks for matt cecil for his life for raising him up in this congregation for calling him into ministry and specifically this week as he went before the ordination board to have his interviews. Uh, we give you thanks that you have formed in him the person that you desire for him to be and as he shared his answers that he was accepted and he is approved and he's going on in the or ordination process. Thank you for Matt. We pray you'd fill him with your Holy Spirit in ministry, uh, Lord, that he would be so effective in being ministry to people down in Orange and a blessing to many people. Thank you for him. We celebrate uh, birthdays this week. We celebrate life. We celebrate it was a great sunny week. We celebrate that kids were able to go back to school, and we pray for your blessing for them. We celebrate with you that this congregation, that we can worship you, that we can be a blessing to many, and we can be community for each other. In Christ's name I pray, and that we would pray as, the, as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that you would give us this day our daily bread, and you would forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We pray that you would lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And as we come to the offering moment today, um, 
Vicky is uh, was speaking to someone out in the hall, and she's actually going to come up and share our offering moment with us. Thank you. Good morning. I've been thinking about this week after Rusty um, asked me to do the offering about the ways in which we offer our gifts here at the church locally. And although all of our saints have offered gifts and we hold in memory many of those beautiful things, I was thinking particularly this week after a post by one of our church members about Doris and her, her artistry that she offered. And she didn't do it in kind of a, in a sort of showy way. Nobody really would have known unless you were here in the church and she gave you one of her, her little embroidered, I don't even know what to call it really, but they were embroidered cards. And I have a whole bunch of them. I think she knew that I love snow. So I have a whole bunch of them with snowflakes on them. And I know that there are a whole bunch of other people here in the church who have cards that were made for her. And what a beautiful life and, and example of just offering what we have to the body of Christ, whatever it may be. Whether it's, you know, we say in our, in our vows to the church, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. You know, whatever our gift we bring is, it is just as beautiful as these cards that Doris brought. And so today I'm going to remind you that we, uh, we have a time of offering every week to support the ministries of the church. Particularly this week, we are still celebrating, because it's still February, today's the last day, we're taking the um, special offering for the Texas Wesley. And so in addition to your gifts to the church, if you would like to make an offering to the Texas Wesley, please note that on your offering and let people know and we'll make sure that gets over to them. There are several ways to offer your gifts here. If you're someone who is just new with us and doesn't quite know how to do that, you could just drop by the church office and drop it in here or online on our church website. There's a place where you can also click to offer your gifts. And there's also monthly ways to do it. We give thanks for these gifts. We give thanks for the gifts of everyone in this church, no matter whether it's in a monetary form, an arts form, a prayer form, whatever form it is, those gifts are the life of this local church and of the church worldwide. So let us pray. Almighty God, everything we have is already yours. So help us return faithfully to a portion of what we own, what we, what we have, what you have gifted us with. And as we give you ourselves, we are open to the power of your Holy Spirit. Through us and through these gifts that we offer, may we know that in Christ, whenever there's a new creation, there is new life for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn today is an old fun favorite, Standing on the Promises, Let Us Sing.
standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, found in eternal be my love's stronghold, overcome daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Yeah, and that's really my hope for you today as we talked about faith, that you would be able to stand on the promises that God gives, that you would know the hope of that, and that you would have the courage and the humility to be able to receive in yourself the faith of Christ so that you can live as if those are true. What a great way to end our time together, singing that song about the promises of God. And so today, uh, I, I pray for you as you go out into this week that, that you, the object of our faith, God, that you would, you would have the knowledge of who God is, both through your seeking and through the revelation that you would know God. I pray that you would be able to receive in yourself this faith, this amazing faith of Christ, who stepped out and lived as if, the, as if God was who God claimed to be and uh, believing and following uh, the words and direction of God. I pray that you would have that faith. And then just the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, that brings all that about, the, the knowledge of God, that brings the knowledge of God's will for us, and that also manifests in us that faith of Christ. So I pray that you would know those this week. Uh, thanks. Go in peace.